Hello there, this is Dheeru Munduluru and welcome back. In this lecture, let's get started with Spring Boot and understand its main benefits which make it so popular. We know that Spring Boot is a project in the Spring ecosystem and is built on top of Spring framework and it helps in rapid application development. Spring framework itself, we know that helps in rapid application development, but Spring Boot makes it easy and accelerates it further. Now, the name Spring Boot sort of speaks for itself. It helps in bootstrapping your Spring application. In other words, it helps you quickly get started with a basic Spring application with minimal configuration. And then we can build on it as per our project needs. But the nice thing is the bootstrapped application would include most of the required dependencies. So we don't have to manually add them in the palm.xml file. For instance, if we are building a web application, then the bootstrapped application will include Spring MVC related dependencies. Similarly, if we are building an AI application, then the bootstrapped application will include relevant AI related dependencies. Moreover, Spring Boot also automatically handles many of the configurations like creating the IOC container or registering the dispatcher servlet with the servlet container. So you can think of Spring Boot as a quick start button for Spring applications. With just a click of a button, we would get a pre-assembled, ready to run basic application with all the dependencies. And we will see all of that in action in the next lecture. Essentially, Spring Boot helps in simplifying and speeding up application development. That's the major benefit of Spring Boot. Now, in this lecture, let's discuss the philosophy or principle on which Spring Boot is built on. In a typical Spring project, we usually depend on several common libraries, which are manually added as dependencies in the palm.xml file. But the problem is adding all those dependencies and ensuring that they have the right compatible versions, that is the compatible versions against each other so that they can invoke each other's functionalities can be very tedious and error prone. Since these dependencies are commonly used, it would be nice if they are already defined in palm.xml file along with the right version numbers and as expected by now, Spring Boot does that for us. Spring Boot provides something called starter dependencies, which would be part of the palm.xml file. And these starter dependencies will in turn pull in all the required jars with the correct version numbers for our application. By default, there would be a basic starter dependency that would pull all the jars related to Spring Core and other core features of Spring Framework so that you get the fundamental features like inversion of control right out of the box. And by default, there would also be a starter for testing as testing is a fundamental process in any professional project. And this starter would also in turn download jars related to testing. But with just Spring Core, we can only build basic standalone Java tools. And in the real world, we mostly build web applications. So if we are building a web application, then there would be an appropriate starter for that, which will pull in Spring MVC related jars with the appropriate version numbers. So automatic dependency management with version management is one major benefit of Spring Boot. Now, as we have seen so far, we also had to manually configure several core features like the IOC container, registering the dispatcher servlet with the servlet engine, and even our views like the JSP pages. That's because we were not using Spring Boot. But as I mentioned earlier, Spring Boot helps in auto-configuring several features for us. And by default, it would create the IOC container with all the application beans like the web controllers and other annotated components. 
But the cool thing is, additionally, it can also register certain Spring Beans from the dependencies that we are using. For example, we may be using a Spring project like Spring AI and its dependency can specify that some of its beans have to be auto-configured. That is, they have to be automatically registered with the IOC container. And Spring Boot will do that for us right when starting the application. But if we are not using Spring Boot, then we would have to manually register those beans using the bean annotation. And if you are building a web application, then Spring Boot would also give us an embedded Tomcat server. So we don't have to rely on an external Tomcat. And as we will see, this really speeds up developing our web applications. And Spring Boot would also automatically register the dispatcher servlet with the servlet container. So we don't need the manual configuration step we have seen earlier to register dispatcher servlet. So all of this is done for us automatically because these are common conventions. Any project generally needs these features and it would be nice to automate them, which is what Spring Boot is doing. And that's the Spring Boot's philosophy, which is referred to as convention over configuration. There is a goal is to minimize configuration and automate the common conventions. So dependency management and auto configuration are two major benefits of Spring Boot and they are based on the convention over configuration principle. And there are many other benefits based on this principle, but these are the major ones and you should keep them in mind. In the next lecture, we will look at all of this in action. We will create a Spring Boot project and then we will look at the bootstrapped Spring application. Thank you and stay tuned.